The Radio Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication. Podcast publishing made easy. Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. Tired of the everyday routine? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... Escape! Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Escape, brought to you by your Richfield gasoline dealer and the Richfield Oil Corporation of New York. Marketers of Richfield gasolines, motor oils, and other petroleum products. Look for the Richfield Eagle on the cream and blue pumps. Escape to India in the story of an ex-army pilot caught up in murderous intrigue. As Joel Murcutt tells it in his exciting tale, Serenade for a Cobra. He's got to keep playing. He's got to keep playing that music and I've got to listen. If he keeps it up long enough, I'll have a chance. But if he stops, I'm going to die. And he may stop. He may stop any minute because that's what he wants. He wants me to die. My name's Monk Slavin. I'm a flyer. I don't know what ever brought me to Calcutta, but something about the name had the smell of gold. It sounded like the kind of place where a good pilot who didn't ask questions might make a deal. A big deal and a fast one. But nothing seemed to be drifting my way. Nothing but the intense hot wind of the monsoon and the fog from the Ganges and the sea. Rolling over the city from all sides and strangling it. There was nothing to do but drink gin and quinine water at the airport bar and pray that you didn't get malaria. Oh, hello, Slavin. Oh, hello, Grant. You back again? Just flew in with a small cargo, a very small one. Mind if I sit down? Help yourself. You can't get out of Calcutta tonight. Another five minutes of that fog and there'll be a better ceiling in here than there is out there. <laughs> you sound like the monsoon is getting on your nerves. What you need is a job. Doing what? Flying stinking hides down here from Kathmandu? You don't call that a job, do you? It's the best work I can get at the moment. Now, if I had a chap like you to handle the flights, I'd have time to dig up some new business. You don't have to dig it up, Grant. It's waiting for you. You used to ferry a lot of stuff in and out of China. Yes, but that was before the present situation. You could still make a buck out of China. A good fat profit any time you wanted. I don't fly contraband. Oh, ethics, huh? Don't you care to call it that, yes. That's why you're starving with a lousy one-ship freight line. I could take offense at that, but I won't. You don't even have a ship, Slavin, and I'll wager you have very little cash. Well, that's a safe wager. You'd win. <laughs> Why not be practical, old boy? I can offer you a hundred pounds a month and meals and quarters at the base at Kathmandu. You know, I don't know how I can resist this chance to become a millionaire, but I'll try. Better than nothing. Cushy enough. 420 miles down, 420 back, and no flying over the hump. No, thanks. Beg pardon, Mr. Grant. Oh, there's my mechanic. I have completed your errand, sir. Oh, that's fine, Jaffa. I'll be right with you. If you change your mind, Slavin, you know where to find me. Yeah, leave a light burning in the window. But don't wait up for me. That's all I got. Two-bit offers from men like Grant. A beggar, just like the reformed beggar that followed him around. His native man, Jafar. A Hindu street baker who learned about planes at an RAF base during the war. Now Grant had him for a grease monkey and a radio operator at the base. Ah, you couldn't beat the British. They found a way to hang on. I reached for my half-empty glass, and I... There's another drink beside it, a full one. A drink I hadn't ordered. Is it permissible for a lady to buy the drink? Permissible? It's a big, happy new custom. And thank the lady for me if you ever see her. The American flyers speak sharply, like the eagle. But the poor eagle has no wings. You were going to fix that for me, baby, remember? You had big connections while I'm still sitting here waiting. My friend can use a flyer. But only if he has a plane. But just wait here. I'll go out and buy one. How come your hotshot connections can't afford a plane? It's not the case of affording. Planes are difficult to get. The license, the question. The authorities are forever asking questions. But my friends, they never ask questions. If you had a plane, for instance, they would not ask who owned it. Yeah, I see what you mean. I heard Grant offer you a job. If you worked for him... There would be days when you would be waiting here for cargo. Enough time to make a little extra flight. A flight not on Mr. Grant's schedule. 
And remember, my friends pay well. Yeah. Yeah, maybe Grant's going to get himself a pilot after all. So I took Grant's job, and the next morning when the weather cleared, we drove to the field. Through the teeming streets with hot, oppressive, suffocating wind carrying the stench of the salt marshes across the city. It seemed like an eternity before we were off the ground and feeling the cool mercy of being airborne. Well, old boy, what do you think of her? Well, she handles all right. I just don't like the Havilands. What is it, war surplus? Yes, but completely reconditioned. Pressurized cabin, heating and air conditioning system. I've changed everything for comfort. Yeah, even the radio. Why the open speaker instead of the headphones? Picked up a fungus infection in my ears in Burma during the war. Headphones were painful, so I put in a speaker. I thought the British philosophy about pain was grin and bear it. <laughs> Only when we can't do anything about it, old boy. Oh, yeah, I see. What's our ETA? Hour and a half. How's your landing strip? We call the base Black Cat. Your plane identification is Red Kitten. The field's a bit like a like a waffle iron, so set it out as gently as you can. I'll treat her like she was my own, Grant. Just like she was my very own. Well, Kathmandu was no improvement on Calcutta. I could see it from the air as we came in. The ancient wooden buildings and the temples, thousands of them. But outnumbered by the throngs of humanity in the dirty streets. We barely hit the strip before the rain started again, brought in from nowhere by the wind. We were weathered down again at the stinking base outside the town, and that's when Jafar, the mechanic, started with the punji, a kind of a native flute. I say, Slavin, do sit down. No wearing me out. I'm wearing you out. Listen to that thing. Don't he ever stop? He's just amusing himself. Sit down, man. How about a hand of cards? How can I concentrate on cards while he's playing that thing? Can't you make him stop? I can't make him do anything. He's in his own hut and, well, frankly, he's not bothering me. Well, he's bothering me. Uh, Why the slicker? Where are you going? Turn that thing off before it drives me nuts. Slavin, these Hindus are strange people. They resist pressure. I'd advise you to... Save it. Grease monkeys handle the same way in India as they do anywhere else. Slavin, be careful of that... the door, but I did. There was something eerie about the room. Something in Jafar's burning black eyes that held me. I watched the flute moving slowly as he played. Then I saw it in the dim light. The weaving, puffed head of a cobra. The snake was dancing in front of him. Oh, I'd seen cobras before in the bazaars and in the streets. No matter how many times I saw them, the sight of that deadly, slowly moving, puffed head was enough to turn my blood to ice. I backed slowly out of the room and closed the door. He played it every night after that, every waking hour of the night, until I could hear it even in my sleep. The strange, whining dirge, bringing with it the memory of a weaving head of a snake. In clear weather, I, I could get away from it for a while, but it would be waiting for me when I got back. And in Jafar's eyes, there was a challenge. I could feel his hot stare burning into me as we worked on the plane. What's on your mind, Jafar? What do you keep staring at me for? Why did you change your mind, sir? Why do you now work for Mr. Grant? What's it to you, Jafar? Mr. Grant is good to Jafar. Mr. Grant is too quick to trust people. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do, sir. You know. Get out of here, Jafar. Did you hear me? I said get out of here. I must work on Mr. Grant's plane, sir. It's an order. Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Stop it! Stop it! Get him out of here before I kill him! Go, Jabba! Please. Oh, no. If you say so, Mr. Grant. Let him. I don't know what Fiery started it, but I do know that I don't want to happen again. Get out of my silver. head. I don't like any of these the people when he's number one on my list. You made that pain enough. I'll try to keep him away from you. I only hope he will stay away from you. What do you mean by that? You've hurt him and he's tried, Slavin. You don't understand these things, do you? He won't come back at you with force, this but he is will come back. Oh, man, and the horse. Who knows who's boss now? How they met. I'll be in the Calcutta with his load tonight. Ranger Tell him to get that thing out of his system while I'm gone. Place it when I get back, I'll ram it down his throat. The Lone Ranger and Tuttle were trailing the worst outlaw 
in the West. His name was Butch Cavendish. They don't make me any money, they don't cost me. Until finally, but I am going to make you money. A lot of money. You better come up with it fast. My job looks to temporary. Now. Is tomorrow yes, fast enough? Tomorrow, tomorrow I'm bringing another load of hides down from Katmandu. I'm going back there tonight. Oh, that would be pretty nasty. No. When you leave Katmandu tomorrow, you will make a short side trip. One stop in China. Then come back here to talk about it. Toto, he missed me, but he shot my horse. Get after him. Get him up, Toto. Where in China? Toto's horse knows. was tired and no His match in speed Katana. for the animal Cavendish will be rode. Waiting for you the outlaw escaped. To return to when Toto Meet returned him at midnight, from the futile chase, at the rear of great he found the lone ranger standing beside his dead I'll horse. A good horse, Toto. Loyal, but very little trouble. and brave. That is, but my next horse must dreams. be faster. When I say I wish that how big, I mean how much. Toto. For you? We've heard stories 10, of a wild horse. 10,000 American dollars. Ah, 10,000. You've seen near Valley over there. How much of that do you expect? Cavendish oh, Carcona, baby. We'll be on the lookout for the, the wild horse, but we follow you. Cavendish. Now will you buy me a drink? Yeah. Now I'll buy both of us a drink. Toto's horse carried the Lone Ranger's saddle, his saddlebags and rifle, while the best man in the foot along the outlaw's trail. Did you know that gasoline is one of the most hill, mysterious uh, chemical compounds suddenly, in the world? And stared at an gasoline can contain hundreds of different valley. components. But one stands out they for its remarkable antinoc quality. It's xylene. Xylene is one of the highest antinoc gasoline components wildly, ever discovered. And, the sun and today, xylene is contained in every gallon of Richfield gasoline. Xylene and Richfield gasoline help give your car that quick surge of not free power. And you feel the silent I'll power of Xylene when you zip up a long hill. Moreover, your Ritzfield dealer offers you a chance of two great Ritzfield gasoline with Xylene. Ritzfield high octane at regular price for motors of average compression. And, and Ritzfield ethyl for motors of highest compression. Let your Ritzfield dealer help you decide which Ritzfield gasoline is best for your car. Stop where you see the Ritzfield eagle and the cream and blue pumps. Get the gasoline that contains one of the highest antelope components no one to science. And then Get Richfield gasoline with Xylene. The buffalo and now we return you to the last man's bullets. Escape. For an instant he stood motionless. Then fell. Ten thousand dollars. Enough to get out of the trap. I can go back to the States on that, buy my own plane, pick up my own spots for a smart deal. I thought of it all the way back to Katmandu. This would be my last night in the world. My last night. Black Cat. Calling Black Cat. This is Red Kitten calling Black Cat. Over. This is Black Cat. Go ahead. ETA, 15 minutes. Visibility poor. How is it there? Poor, but all right for landing, sir. Light landing in Utah. On all corners of the field. Flares, you hear me? The horse's strength has returned. Mr. Black has already left. There was one small fire in his eye. A spring in his step. And his head was lifted proudly. What do you mean, music? My music, sir. Him, pretty strong. Pretty good horse. I wonder if you'll take a seat. Why that dirty little swine? Try. He's trying to leave him, but I wouldn't let him. I couldn't afford it now. Just this one night, I could forget anything. No, Toto, wait. wait. I spotted the oil fires at the four corners of the field, burning a clear spot from the ground. I turned on my landing lights and set her down like an old lady's rocking chair. I'd never land on this field again. I'd use it for one more takeoff tomorrow. But I'd never land on it again. <laughs> Silver! Hey, Silver! Carcano, where are you? Otto, he's day. coming back. No, no, no. It's it's just as if he knew what I said. Silver! <laughs> Silver, you beauty. You're very prompt, Mr. Slayer. Ten thousand dollars worth. That as the mighty stallion to felt the halter, he trembled as if from a chill. Every Excellent. instinct told him that he must flee at once to preserve his freedom. To go into and yet he stood his ground. Well, it's vague. It's it was a big country. that kept him there. It was something stronger. Some mysterious of bond of friendship and understanding. About a thousand miles in. He heard the man's Very voice. Hungry. And he liked it. Here's a man. Silver. What's Silver. the deal? Are you going to be partners? Not a regular air base, but good enough for a landing. Now, Toto. 
the saddle. You will time your landing oh, for like uh, just before take sundown. Saddle. Never was a you horse will take like off this. Again almost oh, Silver, and return we're going to night. work together. Back the horse was night. wild and unused to the ways of men, and the weight of a saddle and a rider. Really. The last well man was a kind teacher. Be dull, but he but was profitable. gentle yet firm, and Silver was intelligent. Of mine, a stallion seemed to sense the desires of the lone ranger, and did his best to cooperate. He learned quickly, and after several days of training, he was ready. Follow me, Tom. Chinese is a wealthy merchant. You will bring the wealth out with you. Through connections you have perilous resistance. No hoofs have ever been the flames like those thundering hoofs of the great horse Silver. During the past few days, Cavendish had gotten far away. The last man and Tonto trailed him relentlessly with only a minimum of rest. It took days to cut down the outlaw's lead, but at long last, Cavendish came into view. There he is! Come on, Silver! Passenger. The you mean passengers, don't you? You said there'd be two. Speed. Your man, Leon Thovich, and the old Chinese. Cavendish fired wild shots over his oh, shoulder until his gun was empty. His horse, though powerful and fast, was no match for the charging silver. The old Chinese boy. Fear and panic filled the outlaw's face. He heard the hoofbeats ever nearer. Get on, man! The last man yeah, I understand. I want you, Cavendish! He disappeared into the darkness and I started back to the field. The, last man's the night was full of sound. Even the damp heat had a sound of its the own. Of the like nothing else in the world. But that... To be tried by law and no, punished for his else. crimes. But there were many others whose criminal Jaffa. plans were to be challenged by right. the Lone Ranger, his faithful Jaffa. Indian companion Toto, Jaffa. and his great horse Silver. I am Silver! Where are you, Jaffa? Where are you? Answer me! I'll find you! I'll get you! I'll get you, you dog! No! No! No, 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 no. The devil is riding me. Uh, I can't afford to think about him now. I gotta think about tomorrow. Just get back to the field and think about tomorrow. <laughs> on the field in the morning, checking the plane as though nothing had happened. But I could see the glitter in his black eyes like the glitter of a snake's. I wanted to smash his face with my fist, but I couldn't. I had to fly out as though nothing was wrong. The motors caught sweetly and I lifted off the strip like a feather and then headed south for Calcutta until I was out of sight of the field. Then I met a half circle to the north and headed for the hump. Ah, she took it like a swallow. Past the white peak of Mount Everest, the top of the world, and out over the great plateau of Tibet. Then the northern rim of the Himalayas dipped beneath my wings, and I was over the hill country of Mongolia. I hit it right on the nose, the field outside the town of Suchow, and made my landing just as the bottom edge of the sun was kissing the horizon. I am Leontovich. The Chinese have a truck with fuel. Quickly. Why so many of them? Karkalov said there'd be one Chinese. They are the old man's friends. They come to see him off safely. That is why we must go to the bother of taking him along for a way. All right, but watch them. An armored car will come over the hill as we are ready to take off. Do not be alarmed. I thought you had everything fixed here. Quiet. They will not be after us. They will take care of the Chinese we leave behind. Well, there better not be any slip-ups. Let's get out of here fast. Give me that hose up here. There were five of the Chinese... And deep in their impressive eyes was quiet terror. One was an old man clutching a wicker basket, but the terror in his eyes was tempered with a glint of hope. The others just stared at the plane with a terrible yearning. The last of the gas trickled into the tanks. We took the hose down. The truck backed off. Are you ready? Yeah, boost them in. Come, old one. They lifted the old man into the plane. Leon Tovich climbed in after him, closing the hatch. The motors caught, and I nosed her into the wind just as the four Chinese on the ground made a dash for the plane. The reason was clear. Coming across the hill at the end of the field, an armored car. Hey, what is this? A shooting? Don't I thought, but how do you worry? Here we go. Our friends on the ground seem to be dead. That was nicely arranged. Now they won't be able to talk. How about the old man? In the cabin, he saw nothing. It is almost dark. We can persuade him to leave us at any time now. Wait. Someplace over Tibet. As you say. Karkana's man hadn't flown before. I could see it in his face. I was thinking, thinking about the wicker basket. That was the cargo I could carry alone, all alone. I didn't have to land at Calcutta. I could go on to Bombay and be out of India on a ship to Africa before morning. The moon was bright over Tibet and it looked like a ghost land. The old Chinese seemed to be sleeping when I glanced back. His head bent down over the precious basket in his lap. I nodded to Leontovich. He moved slowly, methodically. He slipped an arm under the old man's head, jerked an elbow tight against his throat. Ah! 
saw the old man's eyes. The terror and the hope mixed with surprise. Then realization. Then resignation. He slumped and the basket slid to the floor at his feet. I set the ship on the automatic pilot and went back into the cabin. He is ready to leave us. I'll open the hatch. You carry him over and dump him out. Ah, such a shame. But at least we shall keep the basket for remembrance. He picked the old man up. I opened the hatch. As Lantovich came to the door, he felt the vacuum full of the rushing air sliding past the plane. He tried to draw back, but I caught him with my foot and shoved them both out. No! No! I was alone in the cabin with the basket. When I opened it, I didn't even mind the stink of the hides. American dollars, British pounds, and jewelry. In a few hours, I'd be sailing from Bombay. A millionaire sailing from Bombay. <laughs> I felt it as I started back over the hump. It was bumpy, and the ship slithered and kicked, and there was a wall of darkness outside. Uh, there was something inside, too. Something or somebody in the cabin of the ship. I turned on the cabin lights and, and looked back, and there was nothing but a load of hides, but the feeling wouldn't go away. I tried to shake it off. In half an hour, I'd be passing over Katmandu, just the sound in the night. I had to have a look through the cabin. I set the ship in the automatic pilot and slid from the seat. But she bucked me and I had to grab the controls. Mount Everest was someplace nearby in the dark. I was sweating. I couldn't leave the controls now. I had to stay with them. But I kept looking back into the cabin with that same feeling. Then I saw it. I saw something long and thin slithering across the hides. A loose rope. I tried to tell myself it was a loose rope, but, but a rope doesn't move like that. And the head lifted. The hooded... The hooded head of a cobra. A cobra in the plane. Plane in the nearest base was Katmandu, still 20 minutes away, and I couldn't take my hands off the controls. I flicked the radio switch. Black Cat. This is Red Kitten calling Black Cat. Come in, Black Cat. Red Kitten calling. Come in, Black Cat. Over. Black Cat to Red Kitten. It is a surprise to hear from you, sir. You should be in Calcutta, sir. You know where I am, you devil, you filthy little devil. Has my pet awakened? He wants to be fed, sir. The cobra is very mean when he is not fed. You put him in the plane. The sting of the cobra kills swiftly, Mr. Slavin. What? What can I do? Jafar, I'm begging you. What can I do? Nothing, sir. There's nothing you can do. I could help you, He's getting but... closer. Please. He's getting closer, please. Please. You do not like my music, sir. The music? A serenade on the flute might distract him, but you do not care for the flute. Play it! For heaven's sake, man, play it! He's only six feet away from me. I will play, but will you land at Katmandu? Yes, 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 only play it! Play! The snake came closer. That ugly hooded head, spreading and raising and weaving in time with the music coming over the radio. He was only two feet away. Death only two feet away. And if Jafar stopped playing, he'd strike. An ugly, ill-tempered, hungry cobra. Deadly to anybody but Jafar, who knew when he wanted to be fed. He knew the only thing in the world that could hold him was that flute. That flute, as long as Jafar kept playing it. I was over the hump. I saw the oil fires being lit on the strip of Black Cat. That meant that Grant knew I was coming in. Well, the fruit was driving me mad. And the cobra. I never knew when he'd strike at some movement of my hands on the controls, and yet I had to move him to land. Oh, Grant. Grant, where are you? I'm here, Slavin. Please, give me landing instructions. Please, please, Grant. When you hit the strip, taxi over to the operation shack, as close as you can get. Jafar can keep the fruit going. We'll open the hatch and try to distract the snake. Maybe we can get you out. Make him keep playing, Grant. Make him keep playing. We're coming out to watch your landing. I have the police with me, Slavin. Your friends in Calcutta have already been arrested on Jafar's information. I made my approach to the strip. The head of the snake never stopped weaving. I could see Grant and the police in the light of the oil fires. I cut the motors, dropped down at the edge of the field. Another minute. If Jafar could just keep playing another minute, I was ready to set her down. The ground was right under the wings. And then the, the fruit stopped! Up in London! Get off! Get off! Get off! Get off! Get off! Get off! 
huh? Will he live? Oh, bad crash. Afraid not. Too bad about your plane. Oh, it's insured. I'll get another. Oh, you might possibly get the money and the jewels, too, if nobody claims them. I doubt if anybody will. No matter. I only want what is my own. Well, Jafar, I'm afraid I shall have to arrest you. Why, sir? There is no law that says I must play my flute. No, but you deliberately put the snake in the plane. The snake lies there dead, sir. Have you examined it? It is not poisonous. The poison sack and the fang I removed long ago. Oh, you mean the snake couldn't have hurt him? He couldn't have been killed by that snake any more than he could have been shot by an unloaded gun. I did not harm him, sir. My people do not use violence. It is against our belief. Hmm. I say, there's a strange one. No matter how long I'm out here, I'll never understand him. Mother will slab him, I'm afraid. You'd better cover him. He's dead. Here's a weather forecast that's guaranteed to be accurate. There is a lot of hot weather coming. And driving in hot weather can spell trouble for your car, cause serious wear, sudden breakdowns. Don't take chances. See the Richfield gasoline dealer tomorrow and ask him to protect all points of your car with Richfield All Point Safety Service. Richfield All Point Safety Service is especially designed to guard your car against wear and breakdowns. The Richfield gasoline dealer will change your oil to Rich Lube All Weather Motor Oil, the Pennsylvania premium grade oil that cleans as it lubricates. He'll safely lubricate your chassis, differential, wheel bearings, and transmission. And he can care for automatic transmissions, too, with top-rated Richfield automatic transmission fluid. And finally, the Richfield dealer will safety check your car for all likely trouble spots. Get Richfield all-point safety service for your car tomorrow. Stop where you see the Richfield Eagle on the cream and blue pumps. Escape is produced and directed by William N. Robeson, and tonight has presented Serenade for a Cobra by Joel Murcott. Featured in the cast were Charles McGraw as Slavin, Ramsey Hill as Grant, Jay Novello as Jafar. Also heard were Lucille Meredith, Joseph Kearns, and Paul Fries. Special music arranged and played by Ivan Dittmars. Next week... You are slowly walking down the deserted street of a small cow town. And coming toward you is one of the bloodiest gunfighters of the West who has sworn to kill you and from whom there is no escape. Next week at this time, the Richfield Oil Corporation of New York invites you to escape to the range country of the early West and to the story of a boy who grew up to be a gunfighter, as Joel Mercott tells it in his exciting story, Sundown. Goodbye, then, until this same time next week when once again we offer you Escape. Tom Hanlon speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you.